Hi, Eileen. This is Don. I think this is the problem that you're talking about when you said problem 11 in section 7.2. And it has to do with um, using the normal distribution to solve a hypothesis test. And really, uh, using StatCrunch, it, it's pretty quick and easy. And I'll walk you through the steps on how to do that. Because we have this little icon here, um, we can click on that, and then our options are to open in StatCrunch or in Excel. Right now, I'm going to open in StatCrunch. That'll take a second for it to come up. And we have our data here. Whoops, where'd it go? There it is. And the first column labeled variable one. We've got 30 data points. And we want to solve this hypothesis test. We go to stat, Z stats, one sample with data. And we get this dialog box. Now the data that we want to operate on, variable one, so we can just double click that to load it into the right side. We don't have to enter the standard deviation and we don't have to worry about these next three items because we have the raw data. And one thing to remember, you, you know that we can use the z-test for this because we have an n of 30 or more. And if you're 30 or more, then you're pretty sure that the sampling distribution is also normal. We need to set up the hypothesis test. The value that we're uh, looking for, let me pull this down for a minute and look at it. Um, you had made a mistake on setting up the null and the alternative. The wording was that the manager thinks that the salaries, the politician, I'm sorry, thinks that the salary for managers in his state is more than the national mean, 83,000. More than tells you that it's uh, the hypothesis has a greater than symbol in it. And remember our rule of thumb, the null hypothesis always has some form of equality. And that can be less than or equal, equal or greater than or equal. Since the other alternative has a greater than symbol, that has to be the alternative. And looking at the six options here, uh, the one you checked is just the reverse. You put greater than or equal. Remember the politician said it's greater than. Um, if he had said at least 83,000, then you would have been right. It would have been greater than or equal. Greater than or equal always is in the null and the alternative would be the less than. But in this case, he said more than or greater than. That means a greater than symbol in the equation. So that's our hypothesis. So now let's go back into StatCrunch. Our null is 83,000. And remember, I, I said that in StatCrunch and Minitab and uh, Excel Stat and other statistics programs, when you're running these hypothesis tests, you just run the test for the equality. In this case, that the mean of the population is equal to 83,000. If we run this test and it is significant for the equality, that means it will also be significant for everything greater than 83,000, the greater than part of the test. What is critical here is setting up the alternative properly. Remember, we have a greater than symbol in our um, alternative hypothesis, so we've got to get that in. That makes it a one-tail, upper-tail test, everything to the right in the normal distribution curve. So we just click on Compute, and we get our answers. And I'm going to drag this down so we can see better here. It calculates the Z stat for us, 1.734. They rounded it to 1.73. And let's see, you answered 027. So 
you got that wrong. But the uh, stat crunch gives us that value. And even if you had rounded it up to 1.74, I would have found it and given you credit for that. The second part is what is the p value? And the p value stat crunch gives us 0.0414. And again, that would technically round to 0.041, just barely. And stat crunch says 0 0.042, a little bit different. But I would have given you credit, obviously, for 0 0.041. The last part of the uh, problem, decide whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Um, we know that the p-value 0.04 is less than the alpha 0.08. Therefore, we reject the null, and since we're rejecting the null, we have to decide, is there sufficient evidence to support the claim, or is there not sufficient evidence to support the claim? Well, in this case, we reject the null, and the claim was the alternative. Since we're rejecting the null, that means we're supporting the claim, and therefore there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. I hope this helps. Eileen, there was one thing that I forgot to show you about uh, stat crunch and the hypothesis test. Once you get these values there, if you go back, you can click on options and edit. And down here at the bottom is what I forgot to mention. You can have plots uh, of the data and of the situation. What is helpful is this p-value plot, since that's what we're questioning. And as I said before, it's always helpful to draw a sketch of your relationship between the mean and the value in question. So if we select that p-value plot, click on Compute, we still have our, our data, but down at the bottom you've got this little uh, link to click on, and it will show you the p-value plot. And as I said, because our alternative was a greater than, that points to the right, and that tells us this is an upper tail test, a right tail test. Our rejection area would be everything over here in this red. And although we don't have the critical value of P plotted on here, we know that with our P value of 0.04, our test statistics of 1.7346 falls in this critical red area. So I hope that helps. I'm going to show you one final thing that you can do with uh, StatCrunch to help with these. Um, let's calculate what that critical value of C is. Z is the critical. I'm going to go to Stat, Calculators, Normal, and we bring up this um, rough sketch. Uh, we want the standard because we just want to know the upper tail test. Our, we want to click on upper tail to begin with, point to the right, and we want to put in our alpha value, 0 0.08, and we use the entire alpha value because this is a one tail test. If this were a two tail test, you would put in half of alpha. But we click on compute, and we get our critical value of Z of 1.405. And can't really, uh, let me see if I can stretch this here so we can see things, see both of them. There we go. Um, you can see that our test statistic is 1.73. Our critical value is 1.41, which is right in here. So our test statistic falls within this critical area that we always want to see. So use those tools in StatCrunch to draw these, these uh, graphs to help you make sure that you're solving for the problem that you intend to solve for.